products in this video were provided to the author to do a review. All opinions are 100% authors and authors alone. Hey guys, this is your friend Iggy back again with This Bites For You. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing and product usage of the Sovereign USB 3.0 to SATA Dual Bay External Drive Docking Station, model number ECDSK2. This is a USB 3.0 enclosure. It is reverse compatible with USB 2.0 and 1.1 supports docking of two drives simultaneously a 2.5 a 3.5 you can have them both in and use them as regular drives external drives supporting up to 10 terabytes per drive that's pretty awesome it is plug and play so there are no drivers required supports transfer speeds up to 5 gigabytes per second on USB 3.0 480 megabytes per second on USB 2.0 and 12 megabytes per second on USB 1.1. We've come a long way. Now, aside from using it as external drives, you can also use it to clone or duplicate drives. So for example, you wanna clone your old SATA 3.5 drive that you use still today for your OS onto a 2.5 SSD, you can. Real simple, easy, or clone one of these to another one of these or one SATA or one SSD to another SSD you can real simple simple and easy you actually don't even need a computer it works outside of a computer pretty cool you don't need to have it connected now when it is connected it's compatible with Windows 2000 Windows XP Windows 7 Windows Vista Windows 8 8.1 and Windows 10 both 32-bit and 64-bit and yes, it is Mac OS X compatible. So actually, come over here real quick as I do the unboxing, and then I'm gonna show you guys how it works. All right guys, so here she is again, the Sabrent USB 3.0 to SATA Dual Bay External Drive Bay Docking Station, EC DSK2. So, go ahead and open it up. Okay, we can see along the front, the actual unit itself, USB 3.0 to 2.5, 3.5 dual bay hard drive docking station. Over here, Windows PC compatible, Mac OS X compatible, USB 3, all that good stuff here. Kind of the same along the side, the top, the other side, and the front. On the back, shows you some of the features, package contents, and then that in different languages as well. So let's go ahead and open it up. All right, so right over here we have the user manual. Kind of just shows how to connect it and everything. And don't worry, I'll show you guys how to install the drives and connect it to your PC. Then how it's gonna show up within Windows. And I'll show you all of this. Okay. And well, good information. Extend your warranty to two years. Just call and register. Spread the love online. Here is the unit, and we'll get back to this in one sec. Let's just see everything else in here. We have a USB 3.0 cable. Okay, this is about three feet long. Not incredibly long. All right. Then we have an AC adapter. So this will require you to plug this into the wall. And this is about six feet long. And there you can see in case you're interested. Okay, and moving this aside, coming back to this now. All right, and then back here is where we plug the opposite end of the USB cable, the on off switch, the DC side and then this is where we're going to plug in the actual drives over here is where it will tell you hard drive 1 100% 75% 50% 25% 25%, HD2 so while you're copying these LED lights turn on and then the clone button right over here okay the front just says sovereign Okay, nothing on the side 
and on the bottom serial number and model number all that good stuff and then four rubber feet all right so let's get started on this So we can see here on my daughter's laptop, I'm gonna go ahead and replace the drive on this one. It has a 7200 RPM, 100 gigabyte hard drive. We can see just how slow it is. It takes 74 seconds to get to Windows from off into Windows, and then 99 seconds for it to get to a stable state in Windows for a total of 173 seconds. That's a long time. All right, so, what we're gonna go ahead and do, again, we're just gonna go ahead and turn it off. All right guys, now that we're ready to clone a drive, over, over here where it says HDD1, we're gonna go ahead and plug in the source drive. The drive that has all the data in it. So we're gonna go ahead and just drop it right in here and it's gonna go ahead and snap in place. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and grab the target disc and just plug it in right over here. And now we're just gonna go ahead and turn it on. Okay, we can see the lights on right over here. And now I'm gonna bring you in a little bit closer so you can see it in action. Okay, and now we're gonna hold down the clone button Okay, and then we can see that went up to 100% and now it's just blinking. It's gonna go all the way up within a few minutes. I'll go ahead and time it for you. All right guys, so it looks like we're done here. I'm gonna go ahead and flip the off switch right back here. And let's go ahead and give it a try. Let's see how she works. We'll just go ahead and put everything back the way it was. But now we'll have an SSD in the machine. Last time it was 173 seconds in total. Looks like it might have had to do a restart. And by the way, just in case, here's the original drive. One sec. I don't know if this one will be 100% accurate, being that it did have to restart itself. I it didn't even start up that time. So let's go ahead and load it and do a quick restart. Clean boot test. Oh, 45 seconds, but let's just make sure. Ah, that's full boot time, 173 seconds. Right. 
for a total of ah, one drive starting up. Okay, so 12 seconds from post into Windows and 37 seconds till a full stable backup for a total of 49.859 seconds, essentially 50 seconds. Again, from 173.26 seconds to 49.85 seconds. That's pretty impressive. Now, the other thing is, sure, we have this drive, it's all fast now, but we still have this one. What are we gonna do? Throw it away? We don't need to. So, with this cable that comes with the unit, just plug this end into the unit itself and then plug this end into the machine. You're going to have to turn her on. Oops. Turn her on from here. You saw that light turned on. Now we can just pop this drive in. You heard it the dee dee dee. So just plug it in. Okay, you should see the drive pop up here somewhere. All right guys, so after tossing in the drives, you're gonna hear all the dee dee dee. So we just go ahead and right click on the start button. Then we'll click disk management. Okay, we'll see the drive down here, disk one, basic 934.14 gigs offline. So just right click on it. Go online. Okay, now we can see the drive comes up down here as drive D. Just open up Windows Explorer real quick. Okay, then we can see local disk D. Then we have our DVD drive. Okay, so then we can see since that drive was only 93.14 gigs, you're only gonna get about 93 gigs or 94. The 130.41 left over is gonna be unallocated. Right click here, then select extend volume. Next, you can see over here available nothing. That's because it's over here under selected. Then next and finished. And now that's gonna go ahead and extend that drive from 93 gigs from the previous drive to the full 222.97 gigs, 100 gigs for the EFI system, and then 500, I'm sorry, 100 megs for the EFI system, and 500 megs for the OEM partition. And then we're good, that's it. You've cloned the drive. The drive itself took 45 minutes and 15 seconds to copy. But remember, you're copying from a mechanical drive, 7200 RPMs, to an SSD drive. So you're taking the slowest drive, copying it to the faster, or the faster drive, so it's gonna go as slow as the slowest drive. That's about it, just showing you an unboxing and product usage of the Sabrent USB 3.0 SATA 2.5 to 3.5 dual bay hard drive docking station, model number EC DSK2. You can find links to it on Amazon in the description below, as well as the SSD I used in case you guys are interested in it. But that's about it for now. Iggy with this bites for you up. See you guys. Products in this video were provided to the author to do review. All opinions are 100% authors and authors alone.